What happens in a science newsroom when a mysterious new virus starts making its way around the world? Today, my colleague Louisa Prechel and myself, Irene Broer, from the Leibniz Institute for Media Research in Hamburg, discuss this question. As part of a planned newsroom ethnography during the month of January 2020, we happen to be present at the Science Media Center Germany as the first reports of a mysterious lung disease in China came in. In a matter of days, the novel coronavirus became the SMC's top priority. In October 2020, right before Germany's second lockdown, we, re we repeated the ethnography to see how editorial practices and routines might have changed. Next, we'll explain what a science media center is and how the unexpected arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic shaped our research interests. Then we'll show what contextual factors contributed to the SMC's response, which we divide into praxeological and an ideological perspective. Science Media Centers, or SMCs for short, are intermediary editorial organizations that operate in between the fields of science and journalism. They provide journalists with summaries and expert statements, either about new scientific results or about science topics that feature heavily in the public debate. The first SMC was established in 2002 in the UK. Since then, other independently operating SMCs have been established elsewhere, including Germany. Despite their potentially high impact on the way that scientific teams and expertise are portrayed in journalism, SMCs have so far received little empirical investigation. Our field site is the SMC Germany, located in Cologne. The SMC Germany is a rather small organization, and its editorial collective, or Redaktion, has seven editors working in three thematic departments, health, technology and environment. Most of SMC's Germany's editorial work can be divided into three editorial processes. Gatewatching, or the continuous observation of science, media and politics. Stories are usually built around new research or hotly debated science topics in the media and then chosen according to several criteria. The editors then contact scientific experts to assess the topic at hand, send out statements in one of various publication formats and the finished story is then sent out to accredited journalists who may use it freely. Our methodology consisted of two newsroom ethnographies. The first one, as mentioned before, was carried out in full presence January 2020. The second one, in October, in partial digital presence. The overall collected data consists of interviews, field notes, SMC publications, and, especially in the second ethnography, due to the home office situation, Slack chat logs. For the analysis, we followed the constructivist grounded theory approach of repeated phases of qualitative coding. We triangulated the different data types chronologically to see how editorial practices and self-understandings change between the field phases. Times of crises often go hand in hand with high uncertainty, which can lead to an acute demand for knowledge and orientation. As we've seen over the past year, scientific expertise about the novel coronavirus has been in high demand, but not always available. A topic that interests us here is the so-called knowledge broker role of intermediaries. In particular, we are interested in the SMC's role in the communication surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic. Drawing on our gathered ethnographic data, we will address the following research question today, namely, how did the SMC Germany respond to the outbreak of COVID-19? To address the research question, we will highlight some of our ethnographic insights from our field phases in both January and October. We can determine four contextual influences that have impacted the SMC's response to the COVID-19 outbreak. Firstly, there is the issue of time pressure and limited editorial resources. In both January and October, the SMC met a huge demand to provide journalists with timely expertise on the novel coronavirus. However, as we saw before, the editorial team of the SMC is rather small, with only three specialists on health science. Secondly, the editors had to respond to, firstly, the shortage and later an overflow of scientific research on COVID-19, including non-peer-reviewed preprints. Thirdly, the editors had to grapple with the uncertainty and multiplicity of scientific evidence surrounding COVID-19. Lastly, particularly in our second ethnography in October, 
The perceived polarization of the public debate regarding COVID-19 was something that the editors were extremely aware of and which also influenced their discussions on topic selection. So we will explain how these four contextual influences impacted the SMC's response to the COVID-19 pandemic in two ways. Firstly, the praxeological response, meaning how did the editors adapt their working routines and publication formats to the pandemic situation? Secondly, their ideological response. This is where we discuss the SMC's role and changing self-understanding. Louisa will now talk us through the SMC's praxeological response. As a response to the COVID-19 crisis, the SMC had to adapt certain parts of their editorial routines and practices to fit the perceived changes in science, journalism, and the public. The pre-established gatewatching routines helped the SMC to flag the initial outbreak early on and rapidly respond to it. Through the pandemic, the SMC had to shift its focus from peer-reviewed journals to preprint repositories due to an overflow in scientific research. As the topic became more controversially discussed, the SMC editors started to become more preoccupied with the public debate in their gatewatching processes. Secondly, the topic of COVID-19 became a major priority since the end of January 2020. The editorial staff had to continuously weigh public risk against the available scientific knowledge. When selecting possible papers or studies, they adjusted the criteria to include preprints based on public relevance and scientific credibility. Thirdly, the SMC had to adjust pre-existing formats to fit the rapidly changing insights on the coronavirus. For a rather small organization to handle this workload, they started focusing even more on innovative solutions, for example, develop developing automatically generated content to deal with limited resources and time pressure. One of the biggest editorial adjustments might be the new publication formats. On the right, we see three new publication formats. The virtual press briefing, for which the SMC invites experts and journalists to comment on current scientific questions. The partially automated corona report, which features current statistics on COVID-19. And lastly, the annotated publication list, which, will take, which we will take a closer look at today. With the annotated publication list, the SMC found a pragmatic solution to handle the flood of new COVID-19 research. In this publication list, they selected, summarized, and classified new research according to perceived public relevance and scientific credibility. Particularly interesting is the inclusion of preprint studies on COVID-19, which are marked extra. Now, let's take a look at the SMC's ideological response to the COVID-19 pandemic. In January, the editors of the SMC mainly described their mission as supporting journalists by guiding them through the jungle of scientific expertise. The service mentality would fit a classic knowledge broker role defined as intermediaries that identify particular knowledge needs, sourcing the required expertise and making that knowledge available. Looking back nine months later in October, the editors felt that they had not only carried out a knowledge broker role, but had become a kind of trust broker. On the one hand, a trustworthy source of expertise for a growing group of journalists, and on the other, a trustworthy communication partner for scientific experts. What's more, in October, the SMC seemed to be gravitating towards a more value-driven type of communication. Here, the perceived polarization in the societal debate surrounding COVID-19 seemed to be the catalyst. One way the SMC expressed this during our fieldwork in October was the launch of Together for Fact News. This campaign was meant to show the SMC's support for evidence-based journalism and its vision for an improved cooperation between scientists and journalists. Although it might be too early to tell, this could mean that the SMC's self-understanding is changing from an intermediary transmitting scientific expertise to an editorial actor in its own right, showing its value in public debate. To conclude, the COVID-19 pandemic and its accompanying contextual factors can be seen as a catalyst for the SMC's development. In response to a volatile scientific publication environment and a journalistic demand for orientation in uncertain times, 
we can see how the SMC adapts not only its editorial processes, but also deepens and expands its position as an intermediary organization. We identify several areas for future research. For example, to which extent the SMC shifts from a knowledge broker to a value broker role? And what impact did the SMC's work have on the journalistic portrayal of the COVID-19 pandemic? An even more centralized and established role of the organization as an intermediary could lead to an improved journalistic access to scientific evidence and expertise. It could also have a stronger agenda setting and agenda blocking effect, influencing which kind of expertise and experts are heard in news media. On a relational level, it would be interesting to ask how the SMC has been perceived by other actors in the communication surrounding COVID-19. Lastly, which innovations will remain in use in the future and which could also be applied to other areas of journalism? It is clear that the SMC holds the potential to be an influential intermediary in science communication. Its response to the COVID-19 pandemic has underscored its centrality in a time of crisis and uncertainty in which scientific evidence has been considered essential for decision-making on all levels of society. Thank you for your time and attention.